In chapter 5, we look at probabilities. We'll be looking at two ways of calculating probabilities. One way will be mathematically predictable outcomes. This video will look at mathematically predictable outcomes. Another video will look at relative frequency. The relative frequency is the probability. For mathematically predictable outcomes, the probability is the ways to get an outcome divided by the total possible outcomes. For example, a two-sided coin. A two-sided coin has indeed two sides. A head, this being a Sacagawea, dollar coin, and a tail. The heads and tails may vary or may not even be a tail. For a two-sided coin, the probability of a head, in this one, the probability that one will get a head is simply one head and there are two sides. So the chance that the coin will land at the head up is one out of two possible ways it can land. One half or 0.5, 50%. For dice, the probability that one might get, say, a, a three on a die or any other particular side is simply the one side divided by the total number of sides. The probability is one divided by six for each side. It doesn't matter what's on the sides. Here we have pips on the sides of the of the dice. It doesn't matter that they're pips. The uh, probability of it landing on that particular side is one out of six. A common mistake that I see students make is, for example, on the black die, that the prob they'll take the probability of rolling a three on a six-sided die, they'll say, oh, that must be three out of six. No, it is not three out of six. Don't look at the face of the die. It's one out of six. There's one way for it to come up and six possible ways for it to land. These are just simple probabilities of single objects. Now, in another video uh, that will be linked below, I can show you how you can use the random number function to generate uh, dice on a Google spreadsheet. The random number function will generate pseudo-random numbers from 0 to 1. Probabilities run from 0 to 1. They, uh, 1 would be a sure thing and 0 would be something that really cannot happen. And all of the probabilities add to 1. By that I mean the probability of heads is a half, and the probability of tails, well that's the tail, of tails is also a half. If you add a half and a half, you get one. A six-sided die, each side is a probability of one-sixth. If you add those up, uh, you get one-sixth plus one-sixth plus one-sixth, six times, you get to one. So you will land on a side. This can be done for any simple system where you're talking about a single toss or a single roll or even a single draw of a card. For example, here we have a Hanafuda deck, locally sometimes referred to as Sakura here in the islands. Um, and there are 48 cards in these decks. The probability of randomly drawing any single card from an intact stack would be uh, 1 out of 48, about a 2% chance of drawing any one of the Hanafuda cards involved uh, from an intact stack. Here I've laid out some of the cards on the table uh, in the field and drawing deck as might be seen in, a, in play. But the probability that one would pull any particular card from an intact stack, if the stack was intact, would be 1 out of 48. One way to get a bore, in this case, and 48 possibilities. So one out of 48, about 2%. So this could be done for any of the, uh, any simple throw of a single die, toss of a single coin, or pull of a single card. Things do get more complicated when you have multiple objects. We're not gonna tackle that. This toss of any one single coin or die 
is not predictable. And so they form the basis of what random numbers look like. And as we look at relative frequency, we'll see that we do not always, um, you cannot predict one toss, but you can predict that over the long haul, the heads and the tails will be somewhere close to each other. And that will form the basis of sorting out whether a difference is random or whether a difference is real. You expect that you might get six heads and four tails, or four heads and six tails. That wouldn't seem unusual on a toss, on ten tosses of a single coin. But you wouldn't expect that you toss it ten times and get ten heads. That will provide the basis for sorting out when differences are simply randomly expected differences or differences that are real. And so we'll look at that later.